Our Want to Know Her series is the chance to introduce you to successful women in our community that are making a difference. There is perhaps nobody that embodies that more than Dr. Noelle Cockett. She's an administrator and geneticist, a mother and a gardener, and she's the first female president of Utah State University. I had the chance recently to sit down for her first long format TV interview. Trust me when I say she's definitely worth getting to know a little bit better. Meet Noelle Cockett. Life for Noelle Cockett looks a little different these days. Her role as the first female president of Utah State University is a stark contrast to the beef cattle ranch she grew up on in eastern Montana. I was the third of six kids, and uh, my father was a farmer, uh, and uh, he passed away when I was in third grade. That left Noelle's mother, a woman with no more than a high school education, to raise six kids close in age. I'm sure for her it was a very challenging time to keep all six kids going and fed and clothed and where they needed to go. I don't remember it as, um, you know, anything that wasn't doable. That determined spirit was her father's legacy. The one thing that my father felt very strongly about was that we would all go to college. So all six of us did go to college. We all have bachelors. There's, I think, uh, maybe four masters, and then I have a PhD. Education was always top priority, regardless of gender or circumstance. There was never any talk that as a girl, I couldn't do academics. Uh, so again, it was a small school, and I remember in classes, especially the more advanced classes, myself and then five to eight guys. <laughs> but that was the way it was, and it was never questioned, it was never thought odd, it was just the, the, what I needed to do. So when the opportunity arose to lead the charge at Utah State, after 26 years at the university in numerous research and leadership positions, there was never a doubt that she was fully capable. I think it's natural to be in this spot, regardless whether I'm a female or male, but what I have come to realize, so for myself, it wasn't, wow, can I do this? You know, is there limitations for me as a woman in this job? I never, ever have thought that about my positions. But what I have realized is that that really is a role model or an example for other women. With this new era also comes a new stage of motherhood, parenting her kids 16-year-old Chantel and 22-year-old Dylan through adulthood. So my 22-year-old son, you know, we assumed he would go to college. And it was actually when I was dean of agriculture sitting in my beautiful office overlooking the quad. And it was the week of welcome when freshmen came. And he was still in high school. And I watched them, and they were throwing sponges at each other, and they're climbing up the climbing wall and all of this. And I thought, I can't see Dylan here. I just can't, you know, he's more, he's a serious guy. He's, you know, just really been, you know, wanting to have his own business. So I think as mothers, we need to also realize there's, uh, there's other directions for success. And, uh, and, there, and I do believe post-secondary education is that. But there are many, many ways you can get that post-secondary education. And, uh, and the sky is really unlimited right now for how people can get ahead. Women wear a lot of hats, you're proof of that. What is one hat that you wear that you're the, perhaps the most proud of? I actually was thinking, well, one hat is a gardener. Uh, but, <laughs> that uh, works too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The thing that I'm most uh, proud of, actually, I would think is a mentor. Um, I think people do come, you know, women, but also men, I think, um, and because they, they know I will care, I will listen. Is there a mantra, words you live your life by? I think respect others, you know, listen to what it is they really care about, and then, then see if you can't help them. As you look back over your life, is there an unexpected turn that you took or a decision you made that you look back and think, I'm so glad I did that? Actually, I 
had a very, very successful research program. I have continued to do research. It certainly has not been as active as it once would have been if I had stayed in that track. And so that moment was agreeing to be the interim dean of the graduate school here at Utah State. So am I glad <laughs> that I chose that path? I still wonder sometimes. Do you? But I think that I have been able to bring great value back to Utah State and to students and to faculty and the state as a land grant and all of that. So at the end of those difficult days when life's hard or trying or a struggle, what do you do? Where do you turn? Well, we gotta talk about that garden again. <laughs> there it comes. Yeah. And just being with my family. I think, uh, again, just being a mom, just being a wife. When does the sun shine the brightest for you? When are you the happiest? I think realizing that I've been able to help people. I have the ability to find the solution and it just gives me so much joy that that, that one person has been helped in that way. I had a great time getting to know her and that strength. I love how well she knows her own strengths and that strength was very apparent there in that historic building on that beautiful campus. She was very aware of everyone who walked in and out. That mentoring muscle was on full display, you could say. A great opportunity to get to know her. I'm sure you enjoyed that interview as well. And fun to see how her motherhood strengths and skills intertwine seamlessly with her education and professional pursuits. So a big thanks to Noelle Cockett, Dr. Noelle Cockett, for hosting us there on Utah State, at Utah, on the campus of Utah State University.